Let me tell you why theories on life and life knowledge makes me extremely excited and pumped. Listen to the end of this video where I explain how I think I'm unconsciously a bit traumatized by the prospect of nihilism and the thought that life is meaningless. And these theories make claims and hypotheses that explain some, quarter, some sort of a value hierarchy or an indication that there is something meaningful and valuable to be found. So before we get into this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life. Let's get into it. So, I suspect that unconsciously I have a deep fear. I am terrified of the prospect that life is meaningless and there is nothing really valuable to be found. It's like, it's this sort of, this sort of like a festering nihilism within me a little bit. But what do I mean with meaningless? I think what I mean with is that the prospect that life is random. So no matter how you act, there will always be random outcomes in your life. No matter how hard you work, doesn't mean you're going to be successful. No matter how ethical you behave, doesn't mean the life's going to, the world will be a better place. And it's this sort of like, no matter how you behave, you will always be powerless to the randomness of, of the world. That's one thing. The other is that there's nothing valuable. There's nothing cool to be found in life or to, to look for, first of all, to strive for and then find it. It's like there's no adventure. All you do is exist. You're like living day to day and that's it. That's terrifying for me. And basically that there's nothing worth fighting for. There's nothing to live for in some sense because the, the, the horrible thing here is that when you mix that idea with the difficulty of day-to-day -day life, you basically have an equation where you mix the pain of life with the uphill nature of life with the meaninglessness, there's nothing valuable to be found, and that's like a negative sum game. So it's like this. So you have the pain of experience that everyone experiences, the suffering of life, the difficulty, like the just the, 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 the sort of the tragedy of life that the people you love die and things terrible things happen constantly across the world. That's one thing. And then you have the uphill nature of life. So with the uphill nature of life, I am referring to this sort of day-to-day -day struggle that is a challenge. So getting out of bed in the morning and having to do work that you kind of don't want to be doing. You get tired, you know, you're exhausted, you will get hungry. It's like, that, you know, you're anxious, you're worried, you're stressed. And that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. It's like your body is just always in like a kind of, it wants to close itself. It wants to hide from the world permanently, kind of like that. That's the uphill nature of life. But the thing is, you can't close off. You need to continue going. And that's, that, like, that's the specific uphill part. You always need to go against the sort of pressure that's just sort of collapsing on top of you. That's the difficulty, I would say. And then when you have this equation, it's like a really unjust equation. You have the difficulty and the tragedy of life plus no reward equals life. And with no reward, I mean, there's no val nothing valuable to be found. There's nothing meaningful. Like you're doing all this tough work, this up, you have to undergo this uphill challenge, which you didn't choose. Nobody asked to be born. You're simply here with this. And then you have this difficulty, no reward, nothing valuable to be found. That's life. Therefore, it's a negative sum game. And that's terrifying. That's like existential angst provoked within me. Because it's like, why would I want to live? Something like that. However, when I hear a theory about life that explains, you know, human nature, for example, I smile and I notice the sort of excitement awaken within me. It's like you kind of pull, take a magnet and run it across my chest and then something, it sort of, something within me catches onto that magnet, sort of, is, is sort of jolts and is, is sparked when the magnet has run across me. That's like what the theory does. 
And I think I have an inkling that that this happens, this sort of response within me, because it gives me hope unconsciously that there is something valuable or meaningful to be found in life. Now, even if the theory doesn't explicitly say like, this is the meaning of life, whatever like that, my unconscious mind deciphers in the theory, some sort of evidence which substantiates the claim that there is meaning in life. And it's sort of like, I un it's something that I unconsciously d understand, but not consciously. I'm not aware of why, of why, what the, what the evidence is, but I think I finally understood it. This is why. So nihilism states that there's no value structure in life. It's like, no matter what you do, nothing is more valuable than the other thing. You know, if you, if you, if you, if you rob a bat, if you rob a, a shop, nothing's going to happen to you because it's the same value as, you know, taking care of your children. It's, you know, there's nothing is better than the other because it's all random. Like you, you'll experience random consequences that are lie outside of your control. So, but the thing is these theories on life, make hypothesis, they claim, they make claims and state hypotheses. That's something about life. For example, they state that something is distinct and therefore like this and therefore not like the other. So for example, if you have, it's a theory about, again, this is specifically about like fulfillment or meaning of life, but it doesn't even have to be about that. It's just like the theory states, this is like this, with these characteristics and these traits, and because it is distinct, it's like this. By default, this thing is not like this thing. Now, for example, what that means is thing A and thing B are different. And thing A, when you measure A, the score is different to the score of B. So, for example, if you're measuring two ways of life, two modes of being. The way of life A, when you measure it, offers a score of 80 on fulfillment. So you, you, you get 80 points of fulfillment. Way of life B only gives you 50 points of fulfillment because these two things are different. They have two different scores on the measurement scale. And what that means is, ladies and gentlemen, there is a value hierarchy. One thing is more valuable than the other. One thing is more worth striving for than the other. And that's it. My unconscious notices then that this thing is important to know and it's like evidence that there is meaning to be found because some things in life are better than the other. That when, it, when, when theories or life knowledge explains life, it says life is like this and it is therefore by default not like that. And that means you have a distinction between two things and you immediately have a value hierarchy because one thing is in some degree on another level of another score than the other. My unconscious mind notices that and guides me towards understanding more because it, it makes me excited. It, it, it's, it's like it communicates, Henry, this is valuable to know. You need to know this. this. This will help you. Why will it help me? First of all, because it reduces this sort of fear that life is meaningless, that this sort of, terif sort of terrified child within me that life is meaningless and that life really isn't worth living. But also that these theories are what I need at this point in time. Like these, my unconscious mind guides my attention to those things that will help me grow and step by step manifest incremental parts of my fullest potential to take steps towards my fullest potential. That's what it is. So awesome. <laughs> so in, con in conclusion, the reason why theories on life and life knowledge makes me so excited is because they explain that some things in life can, well, they measure things essentially that life is like this and therefore it is not like that. And when you have this distinction, you have a value hierarchy because you can measure things and these different things have different scores. And if they have different scores, they have different values. And that then 
um, repudiates the nihilistic claim that life is meaningless and then that it is random and no matter what you do, you have the same outcomes in life. And that makes me really pumped. So please leave a comment below whether these like theories on life, for example, I don't know, like, like Jungian psychology, for example, or uh, theories on good and evil, for example, like Dante Alighieri's book Inferno or Paradise Lost by John Milton, whether these things also make you excited or not, or whether it's just me and I'm a bit strange. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life. Thank you for listening.